My name is Fred Robinson. And I'm going to talk this morning about the organisational aspects of the treatment of the diabetic foot. Diabetic foot disease is increasing in prevalence in the United Kingdom. In 2006, there were almost 2 million patients with this problem, and this has increased to greater than 5 million over the next 10 years or so. Of these patients, about 10% develop a foot ulcer during their lifetime. So this is a major impact on healthcare in the United Kingdom. The cost of care of diabetes is really quite substantial. Diabetes care in general in the United Kingdom costs about £10 billion per year. Of this amount, about £650 million is spent on care of the diabetic foot. That is £1 in every £150 of the total NHS budget. This is partly because 25% of all diabetic admissions are for foot disease. And the cost and impact on individuals is substantial. There are about 100 limb amputations per week in the United Kingdom which are resultant on uh, diabetic foot disease. As with many aspects of care in this day and age, there are guidelines to better enable delivery of these services. NICE guidelines were produced um, for care around the diabetic foot, and these were last updated in August 2015. Various organisational processes are described, and these include a foot protection service and a multidisciplinary foot care service. I'm going to go on and describe these and their constituent individuals. There needs to be a named consultant who's in, care, who's in charge of care for the patient, and care needs to be delivered within 24 hours. Despite these guidelines being quite powerful, only about 71% of trusts fulfil these basic levels. Better organisation will no doubt improve the care for this vulnerable group of patients. So what is a foot protection service? Well, this is led by the podiatrists and really establishes outpatient care for complex patients with diabetic foot disease. The, di the podiatrists debride the wounds and ulcers and examine the foot and check and monitor the development and healing of ulcers. There needs to be a diabetologist who often is in charge of the clinic and will provide uh, advice for the better control of these patients' blood sugars. You also need to have an orthotist to provide insoles, shoes and any other orthotic requirement that is required. This is different from the multidisciplinary foot care service. This is based usually in a diabetic uh, department, but has numerous individuals who contribute, contribute to the care of the more complex patient. These individuals include the podiatrist, who obviously is fairly central to the day-to-day -day running of this, progr this program, diabetes specialist nurses, one needs vascular surgical input, microbiologists to advise with regards to antibiotic delivery and sensitivities, orthopedic surgeons, again, the biomechanical and orthotic advice of an orthotic department. One may need radiological input for the diagnosis of infection, scanning and vascular interventions. One needs to have casting involved for the provision of total contact casts, and it may be that the wound care nurses and department uh, deliver and help in the delivery of this service. As with many aspects of care, we are always working in a changing environment. In orthopaedic surgery, surgery, the establishment of major trauma centres has improved care for this group of patients. The vascular surgeons have also had to change their practice and with the centralisation of arterial surgery into hubs and spokes, there has been a big shift in the delivery of service and this obviously has an impact on, this, on the diabetic patient. Vascular reconfiguration has raised concerns in that many non-arterial hubs are concerned that they have less vascular surgical input. They are used to having a vascular surgeon on site who, and the vascular surgeons have delivered much of the care um, for these patients. However, vascular reconfiguration, in my opinion, is an opportunity to better put, put in place structures for looking after the diabetic foot. In order to do this, we need to get organised. We know that cancer centres uh, improve outcomes, trauma centres lead to a 25% reduction in mortality. 
And for similar reasons, we feel that the arterial centralization can be used to drive better care for diabetic patients. So how do we do this? To this end, uh, we've had a multidisciplinary task force that has been looking at better delivery and better organization of the multidisciplinary diabetic foot care environment. I would like to thank the organizations which have been involved. And as you will see from this uh, slide, they inc include the British Orthopaedic Association, the British Orthopaedic Foot and Ankle Society, the Vascular Society, Diabetes uh, UK, uh, Foot in Diabetes UK, uh, the Association of Britical, British Clinical Diabetologists, and the Prosthetists and Orthotists. The group has worked under the chairmanship of Professor Jonathan Balabji, who is the National Director of Obesity and Diabetes in the UK. But I'm also grateful to Kevin Varty, Catherine Gooday and Bridget Turner, who've helped to bring this document to life. So what is the document? Well, you can find it on these websites. Um, if you go to the England.NHS UK website uh, and you search for diabetic foot, you will find the document which looks a little bit like this. So this document outlines the uh, care and processes for delivery of the diabetic foot. This is supposed to be an inclusive document. If you have a process that works better, please carry on using it. Um, and hopefully with that, we can uh, improve care for this group of patients. This is not something that can be done in an arterial center in isolation. The diabetic foot is problems, as we have described, are expensive and common. They're also of, variety, of varying severity. So, as we know, we always have to ask an expert. But who is that expert? Well, in many cases, that expert will be yourself. So you do not need to defer to the specialist centre. This has to be a process that is undertaken throughout the hospitals of the UK. I would observe from my own practice over the last 15 to 20 years that foot care is much easier if well organized. This group is our multidisciplinary foot team and includes prosthetists, orthotists, vascular surgeons, um, podiatrists, diabetologists, um, and so on. So this is a large group of people and one cannot work in isolation to do this. As I have said, the document we have tried to write is flexible to allow variation of practice. It hopefully should be practical and it, should also, it is also compatible with the NICE guidelines. So these should allow you to drive care and organizational change within your hospital to improve care for these patients. So how do we structure it? How do we envisage this working in the future? Well, obviously there are going to be arterial hubs and non-arterial centers. The big change over the last few years is that the uh, vascular surgeons have become visiting in the non-arterial centres. Nevertheless, the vascular surgeons have a substantial pro uh, presence within the non-arterial centres and they will be in your hospital on two to three days per week at least. So in non-arterial centres, the structure will be a diabetologist, hopefully an orthopaedic foot and ankle surgeon. There are now orthopaedic foot and ankle surgeons in the vast majority of hospitals within the UK. And I think it is this group who are going to have to take care uh, and responsibility for the surgical aspects of care of these patients. The days of the general surgeon have largely vanished with people having upper GI, lower GI interests and so on. And I think to expect non-orthopaedic surgeons who may be more used to operating on the abdomen to operate on the limb is probably unrealistic. We, as orthopaedic surgeons, are regularly operating in this area and I think we need to take care and ownership of this group of patients. Obviously the podiatrist and the orthotist also have a central role to the care of these patients. This raises the question as to who looks after these patients. My feeling is that the diabetologists are in the best position to do this. The many of the complex issues with regarding, with regarding these patients are around their diabetic care and optimization of glycemic control is going to improve out out uh, um, outcomes. Therefore, if the patient can be uh, admitted under the diabetologists, have their medical issues addressed and controlled, 
that allows us to optimize the surgical environment. Vascular in, input um, will, be, uh, will be on a visiting basis. And there are going to be some patients who are admitted as emergencies and need a vascular opinion. So the process of referral has to be easy and open. And also repatriation has to be re robust with good handover and communication if the patient is discharged from the arterial to the non-arterial centre. So how do we envisage the non-arterial centres working in the emergency situation? The patient who is admitted with a potential abscess or sepsis. So if there is ischemia and the, there is no critical problem, the patient can be admitted, uh, uh, reviewed by the on-site orthopaedic surgeon who may not be an orthopaedic foot and ankle surgeon in the emergency situation. The day following, or the couple of days following, the patient will hopefully be reviewed by the multidisciplinary foot team, which will include um, uh, diabetology, uh, uh, vascular and orthopaedic representation. Obviously, is there, if there is a critical problem with either, uh, with either critical ischemia or an abscess, the patient may need discussion with the arterial hub. The non-ischemic patient can be treated in the non-arterial centre. The patient will need to be ad admitted, possibly under the non-foot uh, and ankle surgeons, and then reviewed by the multidisciplinary foot team at the next available time. Obviously, the acute emergency is the abscess. Spreading cellulitis and the such like can be treated with intravenous antibiotics uh, and elevation. However, if there is an abscess, the pus needs draining. There is the hope that in the, in the next few months we are going to produce guidelines for non-foot and ankle surgeons to try and uh, aid and as an aid memoir for the care of this group of patients. However, abscess drainage needs to be undertaken acutely. The patient will not improve by sitting on the ward for a week with a large uh, abscess. Well, in draining these abscesses, one needs to make large incisions may need to make dorsal and plantar incision um, and the uh, wounds need to be uh, left open and pus freely drained. It is often a little bit disappointing and uh, large amounts of pus, are not, as in the hand, are often not drained. However, the patient's condition will improve following drainage and antibiotic administration. I tend to make linear incisions along the lines of the tendons as indeed the, the, the pus tends to track in these planes and this allows the wound to be extended if further drainage is required. As with all change, we need to look at how we enforce this. What I would like to see happen is that uh, a tariff uplifts are given for appropriate delivery of foot and ankle care. Obviously, the arterial centre are going to have issues with this. Without proper management of this workload, we will see arterial centres become overloaded and overfilled um, with uh, patients with the diabetic feet. It is essential that communication, both on referral and discharge, is open and easy, and this is going to need good uh, communication and uh, appropriate uh, phone numbers and the such like um, to, for the vascular services. We also need to have good um, uh, engagement from the hub out to the spokes and good communication with regular ward rounds uh, and uh, um, discussion with the vascular surgical services. So the non-arterial centre will look after all cases except the acute vascular. There will often be angioplasty and um, interventional radiological services available in the non-arterial centre which will allow these patients to continue to be cared for in their home hospital which is obviously better for the patients. I would anticipate that in the presence or absence uh, of significant arterial disease, urgent abscess drainage should be able to be undertaken in, in the in non-arterial centre. This may be undertaken by the orthopaedic foot and ankle surgeon, but the general orthopaedic surgeon should also have this within their brief. There needs to be free dialogue so that these patients can be discussed if there are concerns with the vascular service. Charcot neuroarthropathy is another problem that prevents regularly. I do not think that these patients necessarily need to go to an arterial hub for the care of this. If there is an orth orthopaedic foot and ankle surgeon who has an interest in a non-arterial centre, 
it is perfectly acceptable for these patients to have their care in the non-arterial centre. So what are the potential problems for, this, for the implementation of these guidelines? Who admits the patients? Well, as I've said, I would like to see the uh, medics, diabetologists, admit these patients so that they can have their glycemic control optimised. This is an ongoing process as opposed to the relatively short uh, surgical input um, which can be undertaken from the diabetic ward. The acute patient with an abscess and adequate um, vascular supply can be drained in the non-arterial centres. This uh, does mean that non-foot and ankle specialists are going to become more cognizant and uh, better at draining abscesses um, so that um, these patients can be uh, cared for in an appropriate and timely fashion. We also will need to see how uh, centralisation works so that the correct patients are transferred uh, to the arterial centres without overloading them. For an example, this is how the diabetic foot model works in Cambridge. We have a, a foot care team looking after these patients in, in, in the clinic daily, um, with patients coming up and undergoing podiatric care, um, and also often seeing the diabetologist to optimise their glycemic control. I undertake a weekly ward round with my diabetic and vascular colleagues, and we uh, see all the patients who are admitted with, a vascular, uh, with a diabetic foot disease on a weekly basis. This allows um, us to monitor and the ward round happens on the day before my, my trauma list and therefore these patients can be uh, treated on this emergency list should the need arise. There is a monthly clinic uh, where we have diabetic, vascular, podiatric and orthotic input and this allows us to see complex patients, for example, um, with a shako neuroarthropathy or non-healing ulcers so they can, can be evaluated and, if necessary, a surgical plan. Um, uh, uh, commenced. So what can you do? Well I think it is going to be increasingly important that we engage in the care of this group of patients. They are a large uh, drain on the resources of the NHS and improving their care is going to be beneficial both for the NHS and for those individuals. We need to improve local structures and organisations to produce the multidisciplinary framework that is going to allow this to go ahead and we need to support and educate our non-foot and ankle colleagues um, to allow them to better evaluate and, uh, and treat patients, the small group of patients with abscesses on an acute basis. So this is your problem. It would be better for you and your patient if you engage with the team looking after these patients. Please don't just bury your head in the sand. This is not a problem that's going to go away. It's going to increase hugely as time goes by. Thank you very much. And I would like to thank my team at Addenbrooks, who I have worked with and have been very supportive over the years.